Let me cross it. And then miss me. A ponanka? Smilla. Smilla, I see your statue. بسم الله كما ميرا شام السلام عليكم how guys doing ما شاء الله welcome أليوسكا how are you الحمد لله طيب إن شاء الله then we gonna begin إن شاء الله like we always begin with the praying praise with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was beginning his speech إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So all praise are due to Allah We praise Him We thank Him We ask for His help And we ask for Him to forgive our shortcomings we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from our evil thoughts and also for our evil action. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is no one who can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave him astray because he doesn't want to be guided, there is no one who can guide him. Therefore, I bear witness I testify, there is no God, there is no deity worthy of our worship, worthy of our application, supplication, worthy of our prayers, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And I testify that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final and the sealing of all prophets to the day we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, the best speech, the best words we can speak today is the word of our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm salam. Because he is the last messenger, the last testament. Therefore, any prophet or messenger before, if they were today, they didn't have no choice but to follow this prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he came with the last message. He came with the all truth. And after all truth, there is no more another truth. Therefore, any innovation, any new ideas, any new thoughts in this deen, in this religion, they're rejected, is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we call innovation. Because any innovation can lead us to, to become misguided. And eventually, if you take that path, which you brought it, is not from the messenger of God, neither from God itself, then eventually that path will lead you to the hellfire. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. 
My dear brothers and sisters, this is the first uh, meeting I think we have after Ramadan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our prayers, our fasting, our recited, recitation of the Quran. Because that's what the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, when this, this month Ramadan was passing or going away, they, was, they were very sad. Because eventually, you know, every person when you have, when you spend time so much with somebody who is very dear to you, special guest, you was waiting for so long, and that, that guest doesn't, is not just like every, any ordinary guest is coming with a lot of blessings and gifts. So then he departs, how do you feel that day? You feel very sad. Because you know, the one who you love so much is not there with you. So that's how the Ramadan was, the month of Ramadan was with the companions of the Prophet. Because as you all know, in Ramadan the life is different. Yes? The gathering among the people, the atmosphere is different. Your heart is different. Your worship is different. Your way how you connect with Allah, with the Creator is different. Because the devils, the shayateen, they are locked up. They are not among us, so we feel different. You see, the environment is completely changed. And then suddenly when the Ramadan goes, then you see the things start coming down. So the Sahaba, they was asking the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months after Ramadan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from them the worship they did during the Ramadan. Because the biggest concern for any believer, the biggest concern for any believer is the acceptance of the, of the worship. Did Allah accept from him his effort, effort or not? Imagine if you work so hard and then in the end your boss doesn't accept what you did. He said, ah, you didn't do nothing. It's very sad. So we connect with Allah Azawajal, and we ask Allah for every single deed we do to be only purely for him. And we ask him to accept it from us. So that Sahaba, they were so sad. So every six months, how they was asking God to accept from them their worship? By doing the same thing they was doing in Ramadan for six months. What we did in Ramadan, we was praying during the night time. The prayer of the night time, my brother and sister, is not only in Ramadan. The reciting of the Quran, like we did in Ramadan, is not only in Ramadan. Yes, the fasting is not only in Ramadan. Giving charity and being together with the families is not only in Ramadan. So what does Ramadan do, really? Ramadan is just like a training. You know, after one year in the companies, they give you training and they give you promotion. Now you're expecting, with the experience, to go higher. So the boss, to give you promotion, to give you something higher, he has to give you a special training. If you are regular workers and now you become supervisor, they train you. Special training. So Ramadan comes for us every year. Allah brings the Ramadan for a reason. He didn't make the Ramadan as a pilgrimage, like a hajj. Hajj is once in your life. But Ramadan is every year. Because Ramadan is increasing your faith. So mean... This year when Ramadan came, it tells you, listen, that's what you have to do now. Which means your worship cannot remain like before. You have to go one step ahead. How do you do that? By training. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trained us for how many days? 30 days. And usually the scholars say to you, change any habit, any bad habit. You ask the... The doctors, or they say, they tell you to change any habit if you want to change it, regardless of drugs or alcohol or anything. They say you need 27 days to change your habit. If you go in rehabilitation or any way, they say, listen, if you are sincere, you do this for 27 days and you will be free. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us, if you are sincere or worshiping the Creator the way how He deserves, then I give you 30 days to you worship me with that heart. And after 30 days, you will not be able to disconnect from me. So that's where it is. So anytime 
any believer, if he want to see himself, how much really Allah, God accept from his, his worship, see after Ramadan. After Ramadan, where is your Quran? After Ramadan, where is your fasting? After Ramadan, where is your prayer during the night? Now, of course, we're not expecting to we be like in Ramadan, 30 days. That is a special gift. Because you are free, the angels are down, there is no Satan, Shaitan is not around you, so you have an easy way to go. But Allah says, after Ramadan, I want you those worship you was doing to keep it in your list. Which means, I, I don't fast every day, but I will fast Mondays and Thursdays. And I will fast three days of every Islamic calendar, which is the days of, of uh, white days, they call 13, 14, and 15, when the moon is full, is white. You see, that the, when you see in the night time, you see very clear, like a sun. Those days, the Prophet was fasting. And the reward is like you fast the whole year. Imagine the Prophet says, you fast 30 days, and then what? And saying you fast after those 30 days, how many days? Six days. Six days. What is the reward? Whole year. Can you imagine? Six days. After Ramadan, Allah says, if you keep going, keep going just more six days. Don't give up. He said, I will give you the reward of one year. Can you imagine? The boss said, listen, if you work two days extra, I will pay you the salary of one year. You will think, you, you will think about it? You will do anything. Allah says, you just do for me six more days. I give you the worship of the whole year, which means... You know what that means, brother? It means you, you can resurrect, when you resurrect in front of Allah in the day of judgment, you will see in your scale that you have fast every single day for all your life. Because imagine if you fast Mondays and Thursdays and then three days of, the, of every middle of the month, it's like you fast the whole year. So you come in front of Allah and you see in your pay, in your scale, in your file, like you have fast every single day. Huge reward. So Allah Azza He give us this test, this training, so we can reflect on it. You know when you do a task, when you do a job, when you do a test, what do you do after that, Brother Benjamin? You look on it and you see, what do I learn? What do I learn from this task? What do I get? I mean, I see my mistakes, I fix it. I see I have done something good, I, I preserve it and I do something better. So that's what usually in the worldly life, that's what we do. But for the worship, we have to pay more attention because that's all our life is based on that. So what do we learn from Ramadan? If somebody asks you, what did you learn from Ramadan? Ah, Sheikh Wahid, if somebody tells you, Sheikh, are you faster this month? You say, yeah, I did. I say, what did you learn? What did you get out of it? It got me closer to Allah. You got you closer to Allah. What do you think about you, brother? What did you learn from Ramadan? Ah, anybody? What did you learn from Ramadan? Uh, yeah, uh, Junior, Ricky. How to fast, how to, fast. how to be patient, that's great. How to, to feel about the people who are hungry, who are less fortunate than us, huh, Sheikh? What do you learn from Ramadan? Yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, uh, this religion train you like, this is not sprint, 100 meters. This is marathon. MashaAllah. Which means, or the brother trailer because our life, our life is all worship. The worship is a way of life. We did for 30 days, it's a training. So God said, these 30 days is a training, now you're ready to run. The finishing line is, when is the finish? When you meet Allah Azawajal. When you meet your Creator. Allah says to the Prophet, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ how long should I worship my Creator? He said, you worship until you meet your Lord. Yaqeen is till death. So you learn from the Ramadan because the worship is not temporary worship. We are not worshippers of Ramadan. We are worshippers of who? The Lord of Ramadan. You see, subhanallah, the Sahaba understood this. But sometimes we get a little bit puzzled. You see, when the... When the angel Jibreel came to the Prophet Muhammad after he finished his message and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you have two choices. You want to live forever? That is your choice. We give it to you. Or you want to meet 
you creator, you lover, uh, and you get the highest place in Jannah. But because your mission is finished, there is no need anymore to you convey the message, it's complete. People to get to Jannah, they got all the package is there. So what do you think the Prophet will choose? This worthy life? He was interesting in this ever. When the Omar came to him, he said, Rasulullah, why we cannot make you like the kings? We build you nice bed and nice. Because he saw the Prophet sleeping on the floor. He said, Ya Omar, mali wali dunya. Wa mali dunya wali. He said, what the dunya has to do with me? And what I have to do with this worldly life? Which means I'm not interesting. It's not worth it. Do I live here forever? Because it's all tests and destruction. So the Prophet chose Rafiqul Ala. He chose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any messenger of God, after he finished his message, he's not going to stay in this worldly life. Because it's not worth it. And thank God we don't stay forever here. Because it's too boring. Yes? So we want to go, inshallah, in Jannah. So, when this happened, the Prophet Sallallahu passed away. You know what happened in Medina? The whole Medina became dark. And it says the Medina was such a dark place, everybody was shocked. Some people, they fall in their knees. Some people, they lose their minds. Some people, they even threaten. Omar was saying, if anybody says the Prophet is dead, I will chop his head. He said, just went to speak to God like Moses went. They couldn't believe to live without the best person. They couldn't believe to live in Medina without Prophet Muhammad. So everybody was shocked, except one person. Who is that person? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. He was the, the man who was with the life of the Prophet from beginning to the end. Allah chose him to become his best friend, even when he migrated. So he went, he was, subhanAllah, he went to the member, to the pulpit, and he started praising Allah and sent salawat, supplication to our Prophet Muhammad, and he said, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan, fa inna Muhammad qad mat. If anybody was worshipping Muhammad, then Muhammad, he is dead. Why? Because Allah says, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul which will taste death. Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad, Inna ka mayyit wa inna hum mayyitun. You will depart from this world in life and they all will depart. Nobody remains forever. So, he said, if you was worshipping Muhammad, Muhammad passed away. But if you worship Allah, the, the Lord of Muhammad, then he is ever living and he is everlasting. And then he read the ayah, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ أَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَدُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيَّةً وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ this ayah the Sahaba was reading every single day, but when the astonished thing, this, this thing happened, they forgot. Allah says, Wama Muhammad. The man, Muhammad is nothing but the messenger from God. And if he die, if he pass away, or he get killed, are you going to return from worshiping God? And Allah said, listen, if you do that, you do not harm me. Because Allah doesn't need me, neither need you. We need Him. He said, you do not harm me. You harm in yourself. So, what I'm trying to get from this, my brother, if anybody was the worship of Ramadan, Ramadan is gone. But if you are a worshiper of Allah, then think about it. The one who you was crying for him during the Ramadan is still listening to you. The one who was saying, I'm going to finish the Qur'an in Ramadan, he's still there and counting your good deeds. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still there. So what happened for us? Only way you can know what happened to you is see you worship after Ramadan. You see, to Allah accept your good deeds, the Salaf says, Al-Hasana tatba'u al-Hasana. If the good deeds is followed by the good deeds, then that means that good deed is accepted by your Creator. If the good deed is followed by what? By good deeds. Because the worship is our life. 
is a food for our soul. Yes? That's why when the Aisha radiallahu described the worship of the Prophet, you know which kind of words he used, brother? She used when they asked the Prophet how she, he was praying during the night. She said, Kana, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahya make He made the night to be alive. Ahya Layla. How the, how the night become alive? Become alive. Because the Prophet was praying during the night. Was telling you, to this night which you sleep to become alive, you have to have a worship. This day what you live to become alive, you have to have a worship. The life what you live in this society, to become alive, you have to have a worship. Now worship doesn't mean you have just to stand up and pray. The smile in your brother is worship. Charity. To give is worship. To help the society is worship. To lower your gaze from something we shouldn't see is worship. To protect your ears from hearing something you shouldn't hear is the worship. You dress code when you appear as a Muslim in the front of the people who don't want to see you like a Muslim is a worship because you do it for him. Everything you do, what's pleased you created is worship. And everything what you refrain from it, what you created told you is a worship. So the Prophet Sallam Aisha called his prayer during the night, call him a life. And there is no doubt. The human being without having connection with God, he is not alive. He's a body, dead body walking the earth. You disconnect yourself from the Creator. How can you be alive? You understand, my brothers? So you see, Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, she says about the Prophet Muhammad, إِذَا قَامَ إِلَى الصَّلَاءِ إِذَا قَامَ وَثَبْ He said, when the Prophet was getting up for prayer, he was jumping from the bed. Why he was jumping from the bed? Why? Because when you want to meet with somebody so dear to you, you don't waste the time. You don't waste a minute. When you have an appointment to, to catch a plan, plane, or to, you don't waste a second. So the Prophet Sallam, he was so desperate to meet Allah, to pray to him, he was jumping from the bed. Aisha says, Radhalana ida qame wathab. You see the word wathab, jumping from the bed. What happened to us today? We have one alarm, two alarm, one come, you cl close it, the other you hit it, the other one you try to put it under the bed, and then first thing you do, look in the Facebook, and let me see how many WhatsApps I have messages, and then you're rubbing your eyes, and then you're dragging yourself, and then you just blow, it's too hard, I'm tired. By the time you reach to make wudu, the sun is already up. Why? Because the connection is not there. You see the Prophet he started with worship, jumping. Then what's the first thing he did after the Sheikh? In other worship. Because Miswak is beloved while he was washing his teeth. And then he was saying, Alhamdulillah Ladi Ahyana Badama Amatana wa ilayhi nushur. In other worship. He started worship after worship. He said, Alhamdulillah, all praise due to the one who gave me a life. Why he has to thank him? about this life. He gave me a chance, another chance in this world. Who from us deserved, can say, I deserve to live one more day? Who can say, I really deserve to live? Nobody. Allah has given to you this as a gift. Don't you think he deserved to be thankful? So many people, they didn't get up today. They didn't make it in Ramadan. Or they didn't make it till Maghrib time. So Allah gave you the chance. So he deserved to be thanked. I was almost dead, half dead. And this reminds us because we're going to return to him. That's what Ramadan reminds you, brother. Ramadan went, you see how quick? Wallahi, I feel like, just like yesterday I was speaking about Ramadan. Now I'm talking how he went away. That's how our life will go away. This is a lesson. Wallahi is the lesson. This Ramadan was 30 days. Your life is between 60, 70. The Prophet said, that is the average. He said, very little will be those who goes beyond. That's it. You're going to return your Lord. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu told us the best thing, the best thing after the Quran, so who can soften your heart is to remember death. 
أكثروا من ذكر هذه الملذات. The Prophet says, remember each other with that which cuts your dreams. You know we have a lot of dreams, but that thing which cuts our dreams, take us away, is the death. It's a reality. It's a remember. That will soften your heart. You will think a little bit differently. I mean, if somebody says tomorrow is the last day, you will not leave that day easy hanging around and going to gym and do some part. No, no, I say, wait a minute. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock, I'm finished. I have to think a little bit. What's the last thing I can do? So you try to put everything in order. So Prophet say, remember. The Prophet say to the, to the wives, when they ask, Ya Rasulullah, can we visit graves? In the beginning, the Prophet didn't want them to go because they didn't have that connection with Allah and they were screaming and doing all such stuff. Then the Prophet allowed them. He said, go visit the graves. Why? The graves remind you about the death. You will, that one day you will be there. Remembering, that is a part. That's how Allah gives us the because everything will pass away. So what do we learn, my brother, from Ramadan? One of the things the brother says, because our life is all worship. That's how the Prophet started. That's how we started. That's how we started in Ramadan. Which means do not forget the worship. That Taraweeh, 12 Rekah, 13 Rekah, 8 Rekah, is not only Ramadan. We have that wrong concept. That is Qiyamul Layl. That is the thing what the Prophet was doing every single night. And Sahaba was doing majority of the night. And we can do it some nights. Same thing like we was doing in Ramadan. Is trainer for you and for us. So when you see the bounties and the gift Allah give it to you and me, my brother, then don't you think Allah deserves something to give in return? I mean, just think about it. The blessing you have enjoyed. The kidneys and the eyes. I, mean, I, I tell all the time the brothers, if I give you, I told the brother Nicola one day, he said, if I give you a million dollars, what you will think about me? And he was smiling. Because it's a good thing, million dollars, you know what you can do. What you will think about this poor guy if I give you that? I don't have it, but if I have it. You will thank me a lot, but what, imagine if I tell you I give you this million dollars, but I want you two eyes. Take it out and give it to me. I guarantee you, say, no, thank you. I can, I can stay like this under the bridge, but I don't want... What I need, a million dollars if I live in darkness. God give it to you, these two, for free. For free. You didn't pay no bills. Don't you think he deserved? So that's why Allah Azawajal tells us in Surah to Tawbah, one very, very scary ayah. Wallahi, very scary ayah. Surah to Tawbah. Allah says, فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ Imagine, Allah says, when I give it to them from my bounties, giving them health and family and money and security and this, Allah says, بَخِلُوا بِهِ When the بَخِلُوا mean, Shaykh? They become stingy. You are having all your time. Allah give it to you. When you say, brother, can you come and pray? He say, I, I don't have time. You have a time to go shopping and here when somebody said, can we go in the masjid like you was doing? I don't have no time. Brother, why you don't read Quran? I don't have no time. Brother, why you don't come in the gathering? He said, I don't have no time. Bakhil, stingy. But he do have time to be two hours in Facebook. He has time. He do have time to be in TV or in the phone or in somewhere else for entertainment for two, three hours. He have a time. When Allah calls him, Bakhilubi. They became stingy. That's what Allah says. Watawallu. And then step by step, they come in once in Juma, or maybe one prayer in Shah if he has a break, and then step by step you don't see him anymore. Tawallu. Thumma a'radu. And after that they reject completely. Step by step. That's how the shaitan works. You start a little bit by dropping, dropping one day, two days. You see in Ramadan, after Ramadan, we're still a little bit busy. And after a while, uh, you're losing the brothers. You don't see them anymore till next Ramadan. That's how the shaitan works. What is the result? فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ 
Allah says, as a punishment, I planted in their heart the hypocrisy, nithaq. Now the scholar says, either Allah put in their heart to become hypocrites, because how they deal with Allah and his blessing, or because they were so stingy, the stinginess put in their heart to become hypocrite. Aqabuni. Why? The ayah says in the end, bima kanu yakdhibun. Because they was alive. They had time. They had time for so many other stuff. Allah says, you are, we are a liars. Why? Because you had time for your own stuff. But when Allah call you, I don't have no time. I'm too busy, brother. Habibi, can I teach you Quran? I'm too busy. Brother, can we do something? I'm too busy. Why too busy? But for the worldly life, say, so where is that? Where is that meeting? Where is that protest? Where is this, this? No busy. We have time. Where is the balance with our Creator? This is a reflection after Ramadan. That's how the shaitan works. You see, my brother, the, the Ramadan is the teaching us because our life is the Tawbah. Tawbah. What does Tawbah mean? Repentance. is the way of life. Repentance is our life. You know the Ramadan. You know how the Ramadan, the fasting was prescribed for the believers before us? Who knows? Why? How the Ramadan came to fasting came as a worship before? Because the Ramadan is, didn't start with the Prophet Muhammad. Allah says, Ya alladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba alaladhina min qablikum. This siyam fasting was prescribed for you just like was prescribed from the people before. How? How this happened? Who knows how the fasting started? You see, that's why the ulama Ibn Qayyim said the fasting, the Ramadan, one of the name is the Tawbah, the month of the Tawbah, of the repentance. You know what happened with Adam? Who knows what happened with Adam? And when he was in Jannah, he was in a paradise, yes? With his wife, everybody knows. You know, in Jannah, you know his Jannah was way bigger than the earth. Can you imagine, sister, somebody said this, all this earth is yours. Any restaurant you want, enjoy it. It's free, yours. Just that restaurant, don't get in near. That's what Allah said to Adam. Any restaurant you want to eat, any tree, anything, enjoyment is yours. Just don't get there. Can you imagine? I mean, imagine the whole earth is yours. Even if you eat every single day, every restaurant, you will not be able to finish all of them. That's basically what Allah told to Adam. What make him go into that restaurant over there all and leave all the rest? Because that's how the shaitan works. Allah says, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ shaitan." Look at the word, was, was. The verb is was mentioned twice. Was, was, which means drag you slowly. Slowly. It doesn't tell, if you tell it right there, no, no, it drag you slowly. He said to Adam, هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَالْمُلْكِنْ لَا يَبْلَى That's what they do today. He said, do I, should I tell you, direct you about there is a tree, you will live forever. That's it. And you will have a kingdom, possession, reach forever. There's two things we're striving for, yes? First is what? To live forever. Let's do exercise, let's do this, this cosmetic, that cosmetic, this vitamin, that vitamin. So we think we can stand it. If we, somebody says there is a water to drink forever, you will do everything. If you drink, you live forever. Because the mind of the human being is to live forever. Doesn't want to give up. And wealth, to become rich. So shaitan gives those two. You see how the shaitan makes the, the sin? He decorated. That's how it works. He makes the worst thing so beautiful. You see it outside, you say, man, look at this. I wish I had. And there's filth there. It's horrible there. You see how they're dancing and jumping in the movies and this. Every filthy stuff they decorate it, make it so beautiful. I want to be in that place. Because that's how they want to drag you, step by step. You see the guy, is, they're showing you all this Pepsi commercial over there. With a blonde haired woman and uh, you know, Celine and all these things, and they drinking Pepsi. 
And you think in your mind, if I drink that, I will look like her. It's all sugar. But programming is important. The media is important. What they do. So the shaitan decorated the sin to Adam and drag it by step by step. He got him. That's why Allah says, فَدَلَّهُمَا بِغُرُورِ You know del what? Del, del in Arabic language when you throw the bucket in the well and you del. Del, del what? You pull in slowly, slowly, slowly. That's what Allah says. فَدَلَّهُمَا بِغُرُورِ With deception. A little bit picture here, a little bit here, a little bit here. A lot of talk, hi, doing sister. In the beginning, starting with the sister, then after that goes to the step, next step, and then the next step, and suddenly you figure out yourself, I'm doomed. What happened? Step by step. That's why Allah says, to, when He tells us, He didn't say, don't make zina. He said, la zina. Don't get near. Fadallahumma was, was. So that's how the Adam end up. And what end up? He ended up and then, because of that was was, he lost everything. And usually the sin, what the sin does? To take you from the happiness, for the joy, to the distress, tiredness, sadness. And all the time you see, brother, I'm stressed out. I have a... You are stressed out. Look in your picture. How many sins during the day you commit and how many sins during the night? That's why you're stressed. That's why your life is miserable. Because that is the result. What Adam was, he was in a jannah, enjoying everything. No heart, no tired, no sadness. Allah says, now you have to be in stress. Because that's what the sin does. Together with shaitan, they were out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Adam, because you sin with food, now do I repent you? To repent your sin, you have to refrain from food. The fasting started. So that what you eat, now you have to refrain from that what you eat, so I can accept your repentance. See how the fasting starts? So that's why the ulama said the fasting is repentance, is tawbah. Because the tawbah is from the root tabah. Tabah means raja'ah, he came back. What you mean the sin? Keep you away. Keeps you away. When you make tawbah, he comes back. Every sin you do keeps you away from Allah. The tawbah, he brings you back. So what Adam did? He repented. How he repent? By starting fasting. And Allah gave him few words. This is from the mercy of Allah. Few words. Rabbana, ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا فَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ You see, that is our father. Brother, our father Adam, he was deceived by the shaytan. You see how Allah used it in Quran? When he told to you and me, he didn't say, oh children of Adam, be careful, don't be, don't fall in the steps of the shaytan like Adam falling. No, Allah didn't use Adam. He say, Ya Bani Adam, la yaftinannakum ash-shaytanu kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannah. Look, he used, he used the term which is dearest to us. Ask any person, which person is dear to you? It's my, my, my parents, my mom, my dad. That is everything for me. True? I mean, that, at least I, I, I think that. If you ask our kids today, <laughs> my games, Allah Allahumma So Allah says, oh, you children of Adam. Be careful. 